Welcome back to another episode of Rock Boys Football. Lincoln Riley in the USC Trojans. Get another one in top 100 national recruit from that cornerback position. Marcellus Williams, the little brother of Max Williams, who's already on this USC roster. And I think the biggest storyline, one, Lincoln Riley continuing to tell the haters that he can get it done out of the high school ranks. And the second is St. John Bosco kid. Like I, I, we've talked about it with some USC fans in the comment sections, locking some of that tap talent in California down and having them come to USC. This goes a long way because USC is going after a couple other guys from St. John Bosco, and that could really help bring those guys over. Now, before we get into Marcellus Williams and kind of give some updates on what's been going on with USC and the recruiting trail, just want to say thank you to you guys and especially the USC fans. You guys have absolutely shown a ton of love. We've talked a ton of USC football. You guys so active in the comments section. Just it's been a blast talking ball with you guys. So appreciate all the support you guys have shown. If you do enjoy the updates, you want to support the fellas, consider subscribing to the channel. But again, can't thank you guys enough for rocking with us, checking us out. Let's talk a little Marcellus Williams and we'll get to the film. But Marcellus Williams mirrors receivers just about as good as I have seen out of the high school ranks, right? He's not the longest guy in the world, right? 5'11", under six foot. But his feet, his short area of quickness, and his ability to break on the football, it's next level. And that's something that USC, USC had struggles on the defensive side of the ball. Don't get me wrong, but one thing they did a phenomenal job at, breaking on footballs and, and, turn, and forcing turnovers. And Marcellus Williams seems to be a guy, whether he's playing in that nickel role or on that boundary cornerback spot, is going to be a guy that gets his hands on a lot of footballs because he does not allow receivers to create separation. When that football is in the air, he breaks on it hard and normally gets his hand on it. Now let's fire up a little bit of what Marcellus Williams brings to the table. Cause again, it is, you're going to see some like special short area quickness. And this is the second quarterback they have committed in the top hundred, right? Dakota fields already in the fold. Xavier Brown, another guy that Lincoln Riley and USC going after you're kind of seeing USC identify that cornerback position as maybe a position that they just want to add some more depth and talent to. You obviously have a guy like Damani Jackson, who I think is going to have a breakout year. But they're starting to acquire a lot of that skill position in the secondary. That's something Lincoln Riley wants to do is force turnovers. There's no better way to do it than having a bunch of cornerbacks that can get their hands on footballs, break on footballs, and not give up that big play. Let's take a look at what Marcellus Williams brings to the table. And this is kind of what I mean. Like textbook breaks on the football, gets the interception. The the feet, the short area quickness, it, it's in my opinion, absolutely next level. This is a guy that can do zone coverage, but he does seem like a, a, a guy that's an alpha in man coverage. See it again, breaks on the football, mirrors the, I mean, mirrors receivers just about better than anyone. I mean, his ability to stop and start and mirror guys next level. Here he is in zone coverage, reading quarterback size, making a play on the, uh, on the football. Again, turnovers, ability to play man coverage. That is something. And then he, hey, he could come up in the box and, and make some tackles as well. Again, that's against modern day, another powerhouse. Lots to like about what Marcellus Williams brings to the table. You're going to see him again, just mere receivers cannot create separation against this kid. And I, although he might be a little bit shorter than um, some other guys, and you're seeing college football and the NFL go to, I want length and I want uh, some long arms and some size at that cornerback room. If, you get a cornerback like Marcellus Williams who just doesn't allow any receivers to create separation. I think that's absolutely massive. And that is Marcellus Williams' game right here, like on an island, just not letting the receiver get any sort of separation and plays the football incredibly well. There is a lot to like about what Marcellus Williams brings to the table. Again, top 100 dude nationally and for good reason. You take a look at what USC is doing. <laughs> a couple things I want to know. One, Dakota Fields. Marcellus Williams already locked up in this class. That's two top 100 national ranked cornerbacks. You're feeling pretty good about where that secondary stands. And then we've talked about it. The ability for USC to branch out and, and go, go to SEC territory and get a guy in Cam Fountain from the state of Georgia on the defensive line. That is hard to do. You don't see a lot of those guys from Georgia. Or if you're an elite guy on the defensive line, you don't see a lot of those guys leave the state or leave that SEC area. USC goes out and plucks him like another guy and Walter Matthews from the state of Georgia. Lincoln Riley has done a really good job getting those guys on the defensive side of the ball. And there's no doubt in my mind, Lincoln Riley's going to get that offensive talent, whether it's on the recruiting trail, whether it's in the transfer portal, 
this USC team is always going to be loaded to the gills in offensive playmaking because there is a long line of quarterbacks, wide receivers, running backs that want to play for this offense. Now, what I want to talk about a little bit more is what this USC class could look look like. And it starts with the two St. John Bosco kids, Peyton Woodard and Kingston Villiamu Issa. I think they're trending in a really good direction for a guy in Kingston Villiamu Issa, who is a long linebacker. He has that, like, if you wanted to build a linebacker in a laboratory, that would be about what he looks like, right? 6'3", 230, coming out of high school. He's very athletic. He has that length. And then Peyton Woodard. I think, I mean, he's a Georgia commit right now, right? I, it's not on the screen. Georgia commit right now, but really enjoyed his visit last weekend to, uh, to USC. And I could see now you got one of his teammates in the fold. You could get two in Kingston. Then he can start saying, hey, let's get one more guy into the fold from St. John Bosco. Another guy that really trending in the right direction for is Taylor Tatum. As a Michigan fan, he seemed to be a Michigan lean for a very long time. Michigan just took a running back yesterday. That's two running backs in the class of 2024. So it does seem like all things are pointing to the number one running back in this class going to play for USC. And this is a guy that can do it all in terms of when he's in space, uh, the, the short area quickness, the ability to make people miss. I and mean, there's a reason he's the number one running back in the country. Super, super special. Also plays, <coughs> excuse me, also plays baseball. And so Deuce Robinson may be getting in his ear and you, you've, it's not the first time we've seen Really good baseball player and really good football player come to USC and going to play both sports. Taylor Tatum's a guy that I really like USC for. And then getting to the ha- who they had on campus this weekend. Obviously, you had Marcellus Williams on campus. Bryce West didn't go. It seems like that's a Michigan-Ohio State battle. But then the, the playmakers are starting to come in, right? Mike Matthews, top 10 national recruit, wide receiver from the state of Georgia. USC's already gone into the state of Georgia and got two top guys. They could to get a third. And then, again, staying on the West Coast, Ryan Pelham, that seems like a USC-Oregon battle. Draylon Miller from the state of Texas. Again, what is most impressive is USC is going out outside the state of California. There is plenty of really good talent in the state of California that USC is going to go after, like they always do. Kids from modern day, the kids from St. John Bosco. But what I think is special and what we've a lot of us have been talking in the comment sections about is USC turning in back, back into that national brand where if you're a kid in Georgia, you're a kid in, in Florida, you're a kid in Texas, like you want to go play for USC. That's a national brand that's really appealing. You're starting to see Lincoln Riley get some traction in terms of that as well. This is going to be, and again, you you take a look at this class right now, sitting around, I think they'll bump up to maybe a top 15 class after this commitment. It, what Lincoln Riley's doing both in the transfer portal and at the high school level is, is elite, right? And you see a lot of coaches – Lane Kiffin, probably a good example at Ole Miss, where he comes into Ole Miss, hammers the transfer portal, but never really gets the high school recruiting going. And he's just kind of relied on the transfer portal to kind of fill his roster. I was a little nervous that was happening with USC, but Lincoln Riley tells me to shut up and say, hey, we're going to get top guys out of the transfer portal and continue to get this roster better and where it needs to be to go win a national championship. But we're also going to get it done on the high school trail. And that's a that's a tough line to, to or tough line to toe, I should say in terms of recruiting these kids out of high school, but also bringing guys at similar positions in the the transfer portal. I think Lincoln Riley doing a magnificent job balancing that out, getting proven talent coming in in the transfer portal, but also still getting top talent coming out of high school. I think that is kind of the recipe to building a really strong – I mean, it starts with recruiting at the high school level. You take a look at Alabama and Georgia. They'll bring in some guys in the transfer portal if they need some depth at a position or need a playmaker at a position – But all those programs are primarily getting it done on the high school level, developing those guys. If you can marry the high school recruiting with the transfer portal and still recruit really well at a high school, but also continue to add talent where you need to in the transfer portal, that seems to be the best recipe in terms of building a college football national championship team. Because the transfer portal, like it or not, there is a ton of talent there. But you don't want to just rely on, I don't want to call them mercenaries, but rely on just newcomers coming in and being productive. You still want to get those guys into your program, into the strength room, and and develop that talent too, and they're in the system and the scheme for multiple years. It does seem like Lincoln Riley doing just a phenomenal job marrying the two in this USC roster. We've talked about USC a lot. Like this USC roster heading into 2023 is complete. It has a ton of talent, especially at the most important position in Caleb Williams. This is a team that, yes, this year is going to be special, we think. But it does seem like what Lincoln Riley's building 
is going to endure the future as well. A very exciting, exci I'm not even a USC fan, and it's just exciting to have USC kind of back on that national stage being national title contenders. As a college football fan, I enjoy it. Again, appreciate you guys checking the fellas out. If you do enjoy the content, again, consider subscribing to the channel. We appreciate all the support the Trojan fans have shown the fellas, and we'll talk to you all later.